Hi folks, a very warm welcome to you. My name is Nick and we're on the Atari 2600 and we're going to be looking at a game called Miner 2049er published by Tiger Vision in 1983. Game did have a sequel but we'll just concentrate on this one for now. Quite an interesting game, you take the role in this platformer of Bounty Bob and you must inspect every section of the mine over a single screen. Essentially you need to walk over all the gaps but it'll soon become apparent we've got three lies we can jump and we go up ladders and slide down slides although they're best to be avoided and um, there we go so you can see as I'm walking along the ledges is going more full color in purple uh, you'll see uh, lines going across we must um, well walk over the whole thing as soon as we've done without bumping into any of the enemies we're there we go into the next stage so here we go I'll explain it as we go along that seems the better way around minor 2049er Right, here we go. Now, you'll see various objects above the enemy. If we hit those, they work a bit like a power pill in Pac-Man, and we can attack the things below and kill them, essentially. Right, so that yellow line down the side is like a portal. There we go, that's that dead, and that'll stop me from dying if I fall at a big distance. So have you got it? I think you've got it. You've got the idea, haven't you, really? So walk over everything, make the whole ledge solid. That's it, folks. So we'll see if I can get to level two. That's the whole aim of this one. If you had this one back in the day, let me know. I'm not 100% sure what other systems it come on. There we go. So I need to jump there, otherwise you'll fall down that slide. How long is it going to take to do this? So it's a bit of a grinding game, to be honest with you. As a kid, it would have kept, kept you occupied for quite some time once you got into it. One of those times where the levels take a little while to complete. I'll have to jump here. There we go. Or else we'll fall down like that. So two lines done. Now we've just got the trickier two top lines up the top. And then it's on to stage two. Did have a practice go on this. And funnily enough, I didn't get off stage one. So, uh, yeah. But I was getting gradually better. You have to judge your jumping, because if you miss a ledge this high up and fall down, you will be squished. Don't, yeah, see, there we go. Don't mess up, Nick. See, that's how I was dying quite a lot. Now, the next bit, we can't jump across there. That gap is too big. So we need to go up the top. Get that sort of like power fill, pill thing. Looks a bit like a cup of tea, which I always like. Right, get that. Now, you can move quicker by jumping, and I want to get to the other side to kill that thing before the time runs out. There we go. Now, talking of time, on the top right-hand side, you'll see just tick beyond 700. If you run out of time, you are dead. But we've got plenty of time each section here, uh, unless you waste it, I don't know, making a sandwich or writing a, a speech or something. Now, this is the, probably, this last bit is the toughest bit of the level, because there's a slight slide in the way. We're going to fall down. But it should be okay, because we're on that yellow line, I hope. There we go, right, so 640 odd seconds left, or however, however it works out in their weird time denominations. No in-game music here, but nice music at the start. It's an interesting one. Reminds me ever so slightly of the ZX Spectrum game Bongo, uh, which they, they copied a little bit. Well, well, Bongo copied this, I should say, in terms of the, the slides, but the game is a little bit different. Right, here we go. So just this ledge to do. We don't want to bump into this red thing, whatever that may be. Some strange alien thing. Right, come on. We need to time this jump correctly. We get on that sort of like special irony thing. Oh, curses. I forgot about that. The ladder. Oh, man, right. So that's why that section up the top right is difficult. Because you've got to jump over the ladder and also then jump over the enemy thing without landing on it, if you know what I mean. So it's extra jeopardy up here. If you lose a life, annoyingly, you have to start all over again. It doesn't remember where you got up to. So, you know, we don't want to do the whole lot again. That is for sure. So timing is everything here. Good luck to me. Oh, yep, yeah, that's that. Good, right. So one jump and we should have level one done. We've done it. Hooray. Now level two, which I don't know how to do. Those things down the middle, I believe, are teleports, which take you up a level if necessary. So, 
Well, there's a number of ways of doing this. Work out the best way. I'm sure you could have worked that out yourself, really. This won't be a complete walkthrough to the end. There we go. Teleport time. Hmm. And from this distance, if we fall down, we will be dead. So do not fall down. Going good so far. If you let the game run in demo mode, it will flash through a number of levels, telling you what you need to do. That's him dead. Ice. Moves quite slow, but uh, 1983, as a kid, I probably would have enjoyed this one once I got used to it. Kid would have got a bit of fun from this. If you hate it, then let me know. If you've got any bad memories about it, let me know. Sorry to relive them. But I think uh, I think there'll be mainly good memories about here. Uh, I haven't actually seen Minor 2049 or 2 yet. So that should be interesting to take a, a gander at at some stage. Right, so that's those two bits done. Oh no, see, that's what I'm telling you about. You get your jump wrong, you have to start all over again. You get three lives, uh, and then you're dead. So let's just do it in a bit of a different order this time. Let's try and do these bits up here. You see those two orange columns? They are equivalent to the large yellow thing we had down the right hand side on the stage one. So it's like a slide in effect, although at a more vertical angle. That red thing up the top there doesn't seem to be moving a great distance either side. So it'd be tricky getting past that thing in terms of... Oh no! It started off so well, didn't it? And now it's going hideously, hideously wrong. Right, last life left. It's now or never. What's your best system here? Probably save the top till last. I don't know what that icon is on the on the left, but I guess it's like a equivalent of a power pill, the top left I'm talking about. Got to be really careful with your jumping. Really careful. If you've played this on any other system, let me know. Uh, I haven't come across it on any other system, but I, I bet it is on one of them. Someone would have tried to convert it, I guess. So say Bongo stole a few of the ideas from it, but it wasn't exactly the same. Dilly -dilly -dilly. Bit like Donkey Kong, I suppose, where you have to explore all of the, um, well, Donkey Kong Stage 4, or Stage 2 on the Atari 2600, we have to go over all the bolts. Dilly -dilly. A nice sound as it jumps. Not up there with Jet Set Willy on the Spectrum, but it's a nice sound. I don't think this bloke's wearing any uh, any any uh, trousers. Well, mm -mm. anyway, we we'll, we'll ignore that. I'm sure there is a reason. Maybe they're at the laundrette, and once you've completed the final stage, you get your trousers back. Yeah, that's most definitely it. Most definitely it. So this is what teleports look like in the future. Up we go. Dun 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 dun. Get your jumping. Don't fall off a ledge. Controls are okay, I suppose. There's, there's only just like three. Left, right and jump. That's it. Oh no. Unfortunately not fall down. Legs broken. All squished. Oh dearie me. Mm. We'll, just, we'll just have one last quick go of the first stage, I think. Uh, we'll probably take on the, the enemy straight away. We won't mess about. But we won't go to level 2. Right, let's just try and do a speed run now. Putting together everything I've learned or not learned so far. Speed run. Check at, check at the time at the top. Boof, that's you dead. Hopefully we can do it all on one life. Off we go. Let's take out the enemies at the top there first of all. We're not scared of them anymore. We know exactly how to do them. We're coming. We are coming. Right. So, take this. Buff. Jump for extra speed, because he walks so slow. Get that before the time runs out in terms of killing stuff. Couldn't have done all three, I don't think. Well, could you? Maybe. Maybe you can do all three. If you've completed this, let me know about that in the comment section. What happens at the end? Does it just loop round to stage one again, or does it give you some sort of game over sequence? A game over sequence would be quite good, but I imagine it would just be a screen, or maybe with some writing on it perhaps. This is 8-bit. Doesn't look as well defined as some of the Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum games, but it is 8-bit all the same. I don't know how they programmed it, probably in a different way. 
Boof, good, that's you taken care of. Right, so everything has been killed here. It's just a question now of walking over all the bits. Don't slide down the ladder. There we go. Wee! Down the ladder. Have you got a big ladder in your house? Uh, you m well, um, I'm not sure how safe that is. How did you get that past health and safety? I wouldn't like to go down that one carrying a cup of tea or anything. So you know what to do here. Very quick to get the idea of this game and then it's just l taking your skills and trying to get as far as you possibly can. There are some big frustration moments when you're right near the end of a stage, do one mistake and have to start all over again. But that's a part of the addictiveness, isn't it? And once you do complete it, you get a bigger sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. I'm not sure if there's any cheats for any of these Atari 2600 games. They're a bit hard to import, really. Off we go. Before, um, these computers didn't have like a keyboard or anything, like the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, Amstrad, or the BBC Micro, or Acorn. Uh, they didn't have any of those. It was more like a wooden box, wasn't it? Initially called the Atari VCS, uh, and then uh, adopted the name the 2600, and there were a number of other Ataris that come afterwards. Not a system I had back in the day, but, um, you know, come out in 1977. I was a Spectrum boy, it was come out in the early 80s, so I was a bit, I was a bit late for that, but you, you might have had it, and that's why I'm having a look at it. Good to see all the 8-bit stuff. Oh no, I don't believe I just did that. Right, one bit left to do, and then we'll say goodbye to this game. This, this might be the first time you've seen it in over 30 years. If that is the case, well, well done, here it is. All games on cartridges back then, I believe. There might have been a few exceptions, some people doing some clever stuff. I thought I'd cover myself there. Off we go. One last bit to do, we need to jump to the far side or else we'll fall down, there we go. So I hope you liked having a look at that one, that was the quite splendid Miner 2049er, bit of a grinding goes on but a nice game all the same, published by Tiger Vision in 1983. If you've got any comments about this game, similar games, or anything retro, then please put that below. A massive thank you to everyone that subscribed so far, helping the channel grow. It really is useful. If you want to help a bit more, there's the site patreon.com slash ndenkin. Every bit really does help, and there's a, like a, a blog there, and some hidden blogs for Patreon users to read as well. Until next time, take great care of yourself, and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.